there's a run on guns in Michigan. Really nice, man. And many are first time buyers. They've gone back to the classroom to learn and into the shooting ranges because of fears of civil unrest. And they come in and they don't even know the process. They don't even know what they have to do. All they know is they want to buy a gun. And, I, and I'm fielding over 100 phone calls a day for that, too. I know. Some believe the bigger, the better. Others want guns they can hide in their handbags. They're from all political sides and all driven by fear. People are doing things that we've never even thought about doing before taking it to limits that we never thought about going before. It's almost like a deterrent more than anything else. My goal is to never, ever have to use it. Anything can happen, so you just want to be as best prepared, you know. We're going grocery shopping after this. Stock up the cupboards. Stock up the other cupboards. Stockpiling, stockpiling food. Well, not stockpiling, but just being comfortable just in case. Dropping all signature on the back. They've been dropping off their early votes amidst a legal battle about allowing guns at the polls on election day. My concern is for our seniors who are going to come out to vote on the 3rd and have to worry about seeing a bunch of people outside with guns. Get out and vote. And this in a swing state where the FBI discovered a plot to kidnap the governor over her lockdown measures and where multiple militia are active. Oh, it's horrible. You know, that's got to stop. These militia men, they're, uh, they're radicals, you know. They consider them domestic terrorists and they should be jailed. I hope we can catch them and put them in jail. Whatever the election day outcome, America has a terror problem. That toxic view of politics has been imported to our state. And it's, and it's homegrown. There's a ladder of escalation that, frankly, as a former CIA officer, I used to watch in terrorist groups abroad. You know, how does a young man in the middle of Iraq go from being, you know, a shopkeeper to a terrorist? Well, there's a ladder of escalation, and I never thought that I would be using those skills to watch extremism in my own country. And there are multiple armed groups. Take the Boogaloo Boys highly suspicious of the authorities and the media, but who agreed to meet us in North Michigan. They say they're not supremacists, just fighting government tyranny. But in the last few weeks, they're among several outfits purged from social media as part of a crackdown on militarized groups. We watched them preparing, they said, for civil war. Several boogaloos have been arrested across a string of states accused of plotting violent attacks. But these men insist they're defenders of rights, including the right to bear arms. As soon as we started coming to the public light, we were labeled immediately as terrorists, as right-wingers, as even racists. Part of, that, and part of that also has to deal with the fact that if, they, if, you, don't, if you don't agree to their ideology, they're going to label whatever they want to label you. Other people might sell freedom short, but that's not going to be me. So. And in reality, what does that mean? Taking on people, shooting people, I mean, what, what it, does it that mean? possibly could. If I it mean, comes if, to that. Yeah, if it comes to that, that could be an outcome. A sheriff is supposed to take a stand and say, not in my county, if an unconstitutional law goes forth, mm -hmm. such as a lockdown or, you know, gun confiscation or anything of that. The election and the COVID restrictions have proved fertile ground for these militia to grow and recruit. The challenges they pose are going to be troubling America long after the polls close. Alex Crawford, Sky News in Michigan.